Hello everyone. I welcome you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank the Lord for giving us this opportunity where James and I could share about the wonderful works of the Lord in our life. So friends, let's welcome James Roy, author of the book, and almost an atheist walks with Christ. So welcome James. Thank you. Mm -hmm. God be with you all. So James, my first question to you is, what inspired you to write this book? Well, I, I'll change the word a little bit. Instead of inspired, I would use motivated. Mm -hmm. So, it so happened that uh, the Lord said, open Jeremiah chapter 30 and read verse 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. I opened. Yeah. And when I read the verse 2, it was written, write a book. Now, when I read that, mm -hmm. I concluded that our Lord wants me to write a book. The question now was that I could not write in English because English is my second language. Yeah. Yet, I chose to write in English. Mm -hmm. Second thing is, mm -hmm. I had never written mm -hmm. anything yeah. except my educational papers. Mm -hmm. The third thing was, I had no passion about writing. And the fourth obstacle was to write about what? After all, I thought, I'm not a student of theology that I try to teach somebody about Bible. Yeah. So I came to the conclusion that our Lord wants me to write about testimonies. I did exactly that. The Lord had spoken to me first in, I think, July 2009. And now... In March 2017, the book has come out. It has been printed and published. Thanks to the Lord. You can show the book to our viewers. Sure. So this is the book that I'm talking about, wherein our Lord guided me to write about the testimonies. Mm -hmm. So is this an autobiography of yours? Yes, it is indeed. Why do you call yourself an almost an atheist? That's an interesting question because people have asked me and said, either a person can be atheist or non-atheist. Mm -hmm. But almost? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's my history. The story is about me. And at the time when I was growing, mm -hmm. in my adolescent age, I believe that, after some time, I believe that 99% I was sure God did not exist. But 1% somewhere in my subconscious mind mm -hmm. was that there is a supernatural force. And that is why I used an almost atheist. When I think back today, I think that was possible because in the place, Hisar, where I was in university and college, mm -hmm. I saw the professors who were scientists. So that's one end of the spectrum. And on the other end of the spectrum, in their personal lives, they were great believers too. Now, I'm not saying all of them. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in, in their own homes, they had a small room where they kept the idols. Yeah. And they used to worship those idols. Mm -hmm. They used to celebrate their festivals. Yeah. So, I think yes. So that means they maintain their professional as well as their personal belief. Yep. So I think you can have you can be almost an atheist. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So in your chapter one, in the chapter one of the book, you do talk about polyatheism and multicultural society. How did they influence your life? In a big way. Uh, I was born in Agra in India. And Agra has a history. 
And in that history, Agra and its surrounding, few surrounding cities have Hindu historical centers, mm -hmm. religious centers, mm -hmm. as well as Muslim kings were there. So Agra had a strong Muslim and Hindu influence. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there were Sikhs, Jains, Buddhists, and Christians also. Sikhs and Jains. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in our circle, we had all, uh, our friends were from all these faith. Mm -hmm. So we were influenced by them. Yeah. You were born and brought up in a Christian family. Then how did you mm -hmm. turn towards atheism? When we look back in my family history, my great-grandfather was a pastor and he would go to rural India on a horseback giving Bible mm -hmm. to the villagers. And then my grandfather was a doctor and he would give sermon in the church. Mm -hmm. And then this, the generation of my parents all and then my generation all these were strong believers mm -hmm. so i did grow up in a family but the thing was what i observed in my teen years as i was growing up that it was ritualistic mm -hmm. and for a teenager that did not fit well because yeah. i wanted to achieve fame and money yeah and like rules like you cannot play on sundays you have to go to a church. You should not see a movie on Sundays. It did not appeal to me. Oh, I know it's so difficult. Yeah, for a young <laughs> yeah, for a young guy that is yes. a lot difficult. Mm -hmm. And so I, I ditched Christ. That's one. Mm -hmm. Second is when I was in grade twelve, mm -hmm. my fellow students took me to the hostel mm -hmm. on some pretext, mm -hmm. and then in a room which was, must be about 10 by 10, they made me sit on a chair yeah. in a corner. Mm -hmm. and, uh, sorry, did not make me sit, but I was made to stand in a corner mm -hmm. and they sat on the chair. Mm -hmm. And then they asked questions. Now their questions were genuine. Yeah. The point to note here is that we were all science students. So they wanted scientific proofs, which I did not have, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. Resurrection of Christ. I could not give answer. How could Christ be born of Virgin Mary? I could not answer those questions. So that was the time when I felt that religion or being a follower of Christ is mm -hmm. because of that I am being marginalized mm -hmm. and I did not want that. Yeah, it's a difficult part to take. That's what you felt at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In your book, I noticed that before you begin chapter 1, you have mentioned a Bible verse there from Isaiah 41. Could you read that for us? Yep, sure. It's so that people may read. Now, read is in brackets. See and know, may consider and understand that the hand of the Lord has done this. Mm -hmm. And the main reason why I wrote this was yeah. because as I told you earlier, I did not want to write. Yeah. And this verse tells that, that this work is not my work, mm -hmm. but it is under the direction of the Lord yes. that I undertook this particular work. Yeah. And in the end of the chapter, last chapter, again, you've mentioned the verse. Yeah, yeah. it's from Isaiah chapter 66 verse 9 mm -hmm. and it says mm. do I bring to the moment of birth yeah. and not give delivery mm -hmm. says the Lord mm. do I close up the womb when I bring to delivery says your God and by this verse I wanted to say see the Lord started this and he has finished the work it has got nothing to do with my intelligence mm -hmm. with my wisdom or my hard work. In your book, you talk about your Red Sea crossing moments. Would you share with the with our viewers what were these Red Sea crossing moments? In Bible, when we read Moses, when he revolted, mm -hmm. he took the Israelites across the Red Sea to the Promised Land. Yeah. Same, there were many incidents in my life. And I crossed from being an almost atheist 
to being a follower of Christ. And these moments I have referred to as the Red Sea moments of my life only. Very good. Mm -hmm. Now, one such moment was when my friend Vic, mm -hmm. he's my mentor also, mm -hmm. he had cancer and the Lord said, pray for him, then he will be healed. So the Lord first told that he will heal Vic. And I prayed and he was healed. Praise God. Praise be to God. So this became one of my, of the many Red Sea cross moments. Crossing moments, okay. Yeah. In chapter 10, you say, Jehovah Jireh, the provider. So would, uh, we would definitely like to hear oh, about that. That's an mm. awesome testimony of Lord's mm. grace and mercy and that he's a provider. Mm. When we came to Canada in 2006, September, we were living with your sister. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we were also trying to find a home to stay. Yeah. Because our two children were growing. Yeah. So we went to the Lord and mm -hmm. we used to pray. Mm -hmm. And see how Lord said, again, he foretold things in two different ways this time. Mm -hmm. Number one, he told me, mm -hmm. open the book of Genesis. Yeah. and read it and I think it was around chapter 13 and 14 and I read that verse and and when I, I came to a particular verse it was and Abraham moved his, his tent his tent wonderful mm -hmm. so I thought perhaps the Lord is telling us mm -hmm. that he will be moving us to another place mm -hmm. so that is one way through the scripture he spoke mm -hmm. and then a very great experience I would say I was sleeping mm. and in the middle of night, what do I see? That my spiritual being here mm -hmm. is looking on the bed, on my, physical. at me, physical, my physical form. Mm -hmm. And after that, my spiritual being moved and mm -hmm. came in front of a home. Mm -hmm. After some time, it came back right over my body, physical mm -hmm. form, mm -hmm. identified it. And went inside and I woke up with a startle mm -hmm. as to what is this. Mm -hmm. So now you know mm -hmm. the Lord foretold in two different ways. Yeah. And he provided us with a home where we stay today. Yes. We that do. is why praise I say God. he is a provider. Yes. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Praise God. In chapter 11 you say Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. I would like to hear some testimonies regarding that. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, there, there are many testimonies in my book mm -hmm. of Lord the Healer. Mm -hmm. In my own case, I was healed of hyperthyroidism in, in 2008. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, open the book of Matthew chapter 9 mm -hmm. and read verses 1 to 10. Mm -hmm. And when I read, read those verses I came to know mm. that it was about healing yeah so I thought that the Lord is going to heal me yes mm -hmm. and the beauty of the thing is mm. I did not take even one medicine mm -hmm. for healing praise God the only medicine I took was mm -hmm. to control my heart palpitation mm -hmm. and praise be to God yes. I was healed mm -hmm. so that's one incident and mm. I have gi given the doctor's report in my book the last few pages about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Supporting evidence. Is supporting. Very? So supporting. Mm -hmm. As Good. to what I just said. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there were cases of, few cases, mm -hmm. of people, doctors saying that they had cancer, the Lord saying they did not have cancer. Mm -hmm. So there was this way, two different opinions. Mm -hmm. One from the Lord, one from the medical way. And guess what? These people did not have cancer. Because of the Lord. Because of the Lord's grace and mercy. Yeah. Right? So that's another, uh, there are some other testimonies like that in my book. Wonderful. They triumph over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony is quoted in chapter 18. Could you mm -hmm. share about it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I personally believe that we should be strong in the word. Mm -hmm. That's the first and the foremost. And the second is our experiences, which we should share with each other, the mm -hmm. testimonies, because it increases our faith. Mm -hmm. One such thing is about 
a, a couple if you remember you had brought that couple yes. to me mm -hmm. and uh, what was the problem there they wanted to have a baby yeah yeah, yeah. so there was some problem she, there. the lady wanted to conceive and she was having problems in conceiving yeah mm -hmm. so we prayed and mm -hmm. what did the lord say mm -hmm. open the book of ruth mm -hmm. chapter 4 and read it mm -hmm. and when we read that book mm -hmm. that chapter we realized that Ruth conceived. Mm -hmm. So what do you think happened with this lady? I guess she conceived too, which I am so aware of. <laughs> yes, she conceived. Yeah. But the amazing, amazing part was mm -hmm. that in the book mm -hmm. of Ruth, chapter 4, verse mm -hmm. 13, 13, mm -hmm. it is written, and Ruth was blessed with a son. Mm -hmm. What do you think happened in this case? This lady was also blessed with a healthy baby boy. Yeah, mm -hmm. amazing testimony indeed mm -hmm. of our Lord's grace and mercy. To obey is better than sacrifice. To heed is better than fat of ram. As mentioned in 1 Samuel 15.22. So why is obedience to the Lord so important? It's critical. For a Christian, it is critical. I'll give you an instance. Our home group decided that to spread the word of God in our subdivision, we should do Christmas carols. And you know very well in Victoria, BC, Canada, mm -hmm. what happens? Well, 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 mm -hmm. in December, it's all about mm -hmm. rain, rain, and more rain. Mm -hmm snow sometimes, windy conditions, very less than shine. Mm -hmm. So once a home group came to that conclusion, came the next step, and I went to the Lord mm -hmm. in prayer on mm -hmm. my knees and said, Lord, mm -hmm. this is what we want to do, but the weather conditions are there. What did the Lord say? You do your part, I'll do I'll my do part. part. So we planned it. Mm -hmm. This must be in the month of October and November. Yeah. We went to our subdivision, told them this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And when we were in the first week of December, first mm -hmm. few days of December, I went to the weather sites, mm -hmm. meteorological sites. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, mm -hmm. what do I see? Mm -hmm. Rain, 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 rain. Mm -hmm. Prediction of rain. <laughs> Bad indeed. Yeah. I went to the Lord again. I said, Lord, Take over. Do it. Show me some miracles. Mm -hmm. Guess what happened? A day before the Christmas carols was to be done, it was still raining. And I told my son, let's go. Because mm -hmm. the Lord has said to do the work. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Obedience is mm -hmm. required from us. We went to the subdivision homes and told them, no matter. Tomorrow we are coming to your homes. Mm -hmm. Six o'clock, I think it was, Christmas carol. Mm -hmm. Around 5.45 p.m. the rain stopped. Praise God. Praise mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. It's all about obedience. Very good. Mm -hmm. In your book, you talk about relationship building time with mm -hmm. the Lord. So why is relationship building time so important? Critical. In today's world, parents have some duty. In fact, I would say in any time, any point of time in history, mm -hmm parents should have and have had some responsibilities, especially the Christian parents I talk of. Mm -hmm. In my case, our parents took us yes. after dinner to sit, mm -hmm. read the Bible, yes. memorize some, word, some words, sing some hymns, mm -hmm. and that made us strong in the word. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's one part of the story. Mm -hmm. If we read Job chapter 1, mm -hmm. Job did the similar thing. Mm -hmm. When the festivities was over, mm -hmm. he would go to the Lord thinking mm -hmm. just in case if they have sinned or spoken something against the Lord. Mm -hmm. So that is the role of parents, to bring children to the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's one. Also is a critical important thing. When we read the Bible, a relationship, vertical relationship with the Lord develops and it manifests right. horizontally yes. with each other. 
So I consider this is a very important aspect of Christian family life. Mm -hmm. So James, uh, in Victoria, people can buy a book in the mm -hmm. book paper form. But what about the people outside Victoria? How would they buy a book? In Victoria, they can get the book from a Christian bookstore. Mm -hmm. Or they can have it from me. Yeah. Whereas outside Victoria, they can go to Amazon.com mm -hmm. and the hard copy which they can order, it is about $23 there. Mm -hmm. And in di digital form also, which is about okay. $7 to $9. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the end, how would you um, encourage our viewers? I would encourage our viewers in two ways. Number one, be strong in the word. Mm -hmm. Because that's the foremost thing. Believe. That's the second thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and third thing is, when you read my book, if you read my book, mm -hmm. you will see testimonies of God, which tell us that our God is still alive and living in 2017. And not only is he living, he is delivering it also. Yes. If it is in his plan. Yes. He does mm -hmm. miracles. Yes. And right. this book is all about miracles of the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's not about my intelligence or your intelligence or mm -hmm. my hard work or your mm -hmm. sacrifice. No. Mm -hmm. It's all about the Lord. Right? Mm -hmm. And it cuts across genders. If people come with an open mind and read this book, mm -hmm. Everybody has a message mm -hmm. and they can read that message for them. They, mm -hmm. they will have a testimony there mm -hmm. and that is awesome. So mm -hmm. even an atheist will benefit after reading this book. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So in the end, I would like to thank you all and would also like to bless you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God be praised. God bless you all. God be praised. Thank, Thank you. you.